You may be seated in this. Hey, being seated, tell three people, you are in the right place today. God has a blessing for you. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Go on praising. Glory to God. What kind of church is Westmoreland? We're a praising church. Glory to God. We're a word church. The church has been washed in the blood. If you would turn your Bibles to Revelation chapter 5. Revelation chapter 5. My subject this morning, the bowl and the incense. The bowl and the incense. And I want to ask you this morning, is your prayer bowl full? Is your prayer bowl full? We're on a season of 21 days of prayer and fasting, and we're filling up some prayer bowls. And what you do in the first of the year you set the course for the rest of the year. And so we're praying and we're fasting and we're seeking God to continue to do restoration in this church. We've, we're putting together a, a, a CD, or actually they don't do CDs anymore. We're putting it together out on YouTube, testimonies out of this church, and we've got quite a few of them. People coming up during last year testifying to the miracles that God had done. So we're going to fill up some prayer bowls. But in the Old Testament, there was an incense altar made of shittim wood where the high priest burned incense on the altar as he prayed. That was a picture of the altar in heaven where our great high priest, Jesus Christ, would stand in the dispensation of grace. For by grace are you saved through faith, that not of yourself. It is the gift of God. Where sin did abound. Grace is much more bound. Where did sin abound? Sin abounded in the heart. Where does grace much more bound? Grace much more bounds in the heart. We have Christ in us, the hope of glory. Hallelujah. But the incense that the high priest, which he sprinkled on the prayers in the New Testament, they are the praises that we send up with our prayers. Now, in the Old Testament, they had to offer a sacrifice of an ox and a bull, a turtle dove, or a pigeon, or whatever. But in the New Testament, the incense we send up, it is our praise. And look at Revelation 5 and 8. It says, And when he had taken the book, the four living creatures, the four and twenty elders, fell down before the Lamb, having one of them harps and golden vials. And that word vial, that means bowls. Golden prayer bowls full of odors. Now listen to this. Which are the prayers of the saints. Right now in heaven, God has right before his throne golden prayer bowls. And they've got some of the prayers you've prayed. And they're in that prayer bowl. And God wants to send you today so I could show you how to fill that bowl up and for God to tip the prayer bowl. Hallelujah. Now look at Revelation chapter 8. Revelation 8 and 2. John said, And I saw seven angels which stood before God, and to them was given seven trumpets. And another angel came and stood at the altar. Look at this. Having a golden censer, and there was given unto him much incense that he should offer it with the prayers of all the saints upon the golden altar which was before the throne. Now, most Bible commentators believe, and I believe after having stu studied this subject matter, that the angel described here is the Lord Jesus Christ himself. He's the great high priest of the church. And as such, the Lord as our great high priest, he is the only one that is qualified to offer these incense and to stand in this office. Now, in the Old Testament, only the high priest could offer the incense upon the altar. Now, Jesus Christ, he is the great high priest today of our confession, our great high priest who stands before the throne of God. And as our prayers come up before the throne of God, Christ himself sprinkles our prayers with sweet incense. That, my friend, is what makes our prayers acceptable. If you could imagine God standing up there, Jesus himself, and your prayers are going up in their golden prayer bowls on the, before the throne of God, and he's taking incense, and he has that golden censer, and he's sprinkling those incense upon your prayers as they go up into the nostrils of God. That's what makes your prayers acceptable unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Look at Revelation 8 and 4. And the smoke of the incense, which came with the prayers of the saints, ascended up before God out of the angel's hands. He said, your prayers are as an incense in the bowl. 
And that word incense in the New Testament scriptures, it represents your praise. And we've been singing about praise. I didn't tell anybody I was preaching on praise and prayer this morning. I just gave the title. But we've been singing and sending up our praise. And your praise is a sweet-smelling savor to God because your great high priest, Jesus Christ, in his high priestly ministry, he is sprinkling your prayers with those incense. Hallelujah. And so as we pray and praise God, those bowls are filled with incense. And our great high priest, Jesus Christ, he takes the golden censer. He sprinkles sweet incense upon your prayers and before the golden altar in the golden bowls, which are before the throne of God. My subject this morning, the bowl and the incense, let us pray. Father, thank you so much for the miracles you've done for every person in here, Lord, has ever been redeemed by your blood. They are a miracle. And, Lord, we're looking at miracles. We're, we serve a miracle-working God. And, Lord, there are people here with particular need, and some of them have prayed and prayed and prayed. And, Lord, they've not gotten their breakthrough, but I pray this morning that this message will drop revelation into the hearts of people. And, Lord, that they will see, as Paul prayed, I pray that the eyes of your understanding be enlightened, that you may know the hope of his calling. And what is the glory of the mystery? which has been hidden for ages, and that Christ Jesus is now Lord, and he lives in our heart. And so, Lord, we offer you praise and thanksgiving. Give us that listening ear. Let me preach your gospel with the Holy Ghost sent from heaven. And the church said in Jesus' name, amen. amen. Now, I preached the message in 2018 on the prayer bowl and how important your prayers are to God. They are so important that God keeps them in golden bowls on his golden altar before the throne of God. And on the altar in heaven are bowls which contain the prayers of the saints. It's not bowl singular, but it's bowls plural. Could it be that it's saying that each and every one of us has a prayer bowl? <laughs> Think about it. Is your bowl full? Have you filled your bowl up with prayers? See, I, I love the world of prayer, but I'm not supposed to fill your bowl. I'm supposed to preach the word of God to you and for you to get revelation. I, I'm so supposed to preach and teach and heal the sick. That's my assignment in Jesus' name. And we see God doing wonderful things in this church, but it's not my responsibility to fill your prayer bowl. I'll help you, but you've got to do your own praying and your own praising. And that's why uh, I do 21 days of prayer and fasting every year. Now, Friday night, we had a good turnout. We had some people that wait. But this coming Friday night, I want everyone in this church that can show up at 7 o'clock for prayer to come out to our prayer meeting. We are having prayer couple with fasting. Now, I want you to look at Revelation 8 and 4. I want you to notice what it says right here. It says, and the smoke of the incense, which came with the prayers of the saints... See that? The smoke of the incense, which came with the prayers of the saints, ascended up before God out of the angel's hand. Look at verse 5. And the angel took the censer and filled it with fire of the altar and cast it into the earth. Can you see this prayer bowl that's before heaven? These incense have gone up, and all of a sudden, the angel takes the fire, that mixture, and cast it into the earth where you have been praying. Hallelujah. See, I want you to notice as the prayers and the praise go from our lips, it goes up to God, and they are received by angels. And then there's a mixture that takes place, and it's turned into fire, which represents the Holy Ghost. Then God says to the angel, tilt the prayer bowl. And what, whenever it's filled up with that mixture of fire, then the angel tilts the prayer bowl down to the earth, and with the fire of the Spirit, he casts fire into that situation that you've been praying about. Now, it's not by power, it's not by might, but it's by my Spirit, saith the Lord God of hosts. So as you pray and as you send up praise unto God, all of a sudden your prayer bowl begins to fill up. Then that mixture takes place and the angel, God speaks to him, says, cast that fire into that situation that you're praying you're praying for. See, that's why I'm a praiser. I love to praise him. I love to praise him. I love to praise his name. I love to praise him. 
I love to praise his name. I love to praise him. I love to praise his name. Let me tell you now. I love to praise his holy name. Because he's my rock, my sword, and my shield. He's the wheel in the middle of the wheel. And he'll never let me down. Ah, oh, my feet on the solid ground. Hallelujah, glory, hallelujah. I love to praise his name. Hallelujah, glory, hallelujah. I love to praise his name. Hallelujah, glory. Sing it. I love to praise his name. Let me tell you now. I love to praise his holy name. Hallelujah. So what does it take to tilt the prayer bowl? Well, the bowl, it must be filled with your prayers and with the incense of your praise. Now, some of you have been praying about a situation for many years. Some of you for a long, long time. Could it be that your prayer bowl is almost full? You've been sending up your prayers, but you haven't gotten your breakthrough. But I want you to notice that the angel responds to the prayer and the praises that are sent up. That's what I want to preach about today because Wednesday night we had a Holy Ghost explosion in this church. Now it's Wednesday night, not Sunday morning, Wednesday night. And if you weren't here, you missed it. Sister Julie Smith and Brother Skyler, Brother Skyler had a stroke August 23rd, 2018. I remember that day because August 23rd is the day I showed up at Paris Island. I'll never forget that day. But he will never forget August 23rd. And he had something that happened. He just passed out while he was walking, and they checked him out. They could find no evidence of a stroke, no evidence of anything. He's just on the way to recovery, and that was a little setback. And, and the devil tried to tell him, no, you're not getting your breakthrough. And Sister Julie, she had something going on with the throat. You just heard her sing. Can't she sing? Glory to God. She's a gift. They are a gift given to the church. But all of a sudden, she got to thinking about what God had done. She's standing back right here. And woo, glory, woo, glory. I mean, she got to praising God. Others got to praising God. So her mother got down on her knees and hit the altar. Other people came to the altar. People were walking up and down the aisles here praising God. I mean, this is Wednesday night. Why was that? Because when praise leads the way, victory is on the way. And I want to tell you, hallelujah, your prayers, you're about to get that breakthrough that you've been seeking because you cannot pray and praise God and not get a breakthrough. I said, you cannot pray and praise God with all your heart, soul, mind, body, and strength. Give God everything you've got and not get your breakthrough. He's, God is able to do anything you could ever ask him, but give yourself to him, hallelujah, and watch God work. Give him some praise. Come on. Give him some praise. Glory to God. Hallelujah. No matter what you're going through, if you will pray it through, and then you can praise your way out. Hallelujah. Look at Psalms 50, verse 15. God said, and call upon me in the day of trouble. Got any troubles? Call upon me in the day of trouble, and I will deliver thee, and thou shalt glorify me. So how do you get your breakthrough? Well, look at verse 23, Psalms 50, 23. God said, whosoever offereth praise glorifieth me. And look at this. And him that ordered his conversation or his ways aright, God said, I will show him the salvation. That word salvation is sozo in the Greek. It means Jesus came to seek and save sozo, those which were lost. Jesus came to seek and deliver those who were bound, sozo. Jesus came to seek and heal sozo, those who were sick. Jesus Christ showed up on this planet, and the devil realized that after 400 years of silence, he was in big trouble, hallelujah, because Jesus had showed up in the flesh, and he came to bless humanity. Glory to God. Now, in the Old Testament days, the sacrifice, it had to be slain. God required the blood of goats and of bulls, a turtle dove or a lamb. The law required 
that those sacrifices be made unto God. And many of you know, you know that David is one of my favorite characters in the Bible. When I get to heaven, I'm going to look David up. I want my mansion on Holy Ghost Avenue next to Hallelujah Boulevard. And I'm going to tell David, come on, David, I want to dance. They tell me how you dance when the Ark of the Covenant came into Jerusalem. I want to show you how I dance when I got born again and the fire of Pentecost hit my life. And I began, woo, glory to God. And I began to praise God. See, the church should be a praising church. When you start praising God, God is a heavyweight. And God inhabits the praises of his people. And he begins to shake himself. And he begins to come down into that situation that you are praying about. Then God begins to show off and show the powers of darkness just who he is and just how much he loves humanity. He loved them so much that he spared not his own son. Jesus poured out his precious blood, gave us his name, gave us back dominion, hallelujah. And God wants us to walk in the fullness of the spirit. Go on, praise God, hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. I love David. Yeah. David, he's one of my favorite characters. His life is a strange mixture. It's a mixture of good and of evil. It was filled with noble deeds, great accomplishments, but it was stained by gross sin. No other character in the Bible more fully illustrates the moral range of human nature than David did. In his early period of his life, he is mentioned as a man after God's own heart. But that was only true when he kept God's commandments. It's hard to imagine that the man who wrote the 23rd Psalm commit, could commit such sins as David did against Uriah the Hittite. But David, just like you and me, he had his ups, he had his downs. Just like many of us, David had his ups, he had his failures, and he had his setbacks. But David always responded because he rebounded because David knew that God would receive a contrite heart and a contrite spirit. And David repented, hallelujah. And, and, and David found the secret to God's heart. And that's what God wants you to understand, the secret to his heart. David understood the power of praise. Look at this, Psalms 69 and 30. David said, I will praise the name of God with a song. Hallelujah. <laughs> David said, I will magnify him with thanksgiving. This also, now look, this is an old dispensation of grace. They had to offer oxen and bulls and, and, and animals. This, verse 31, this also shall please the Lord better than an ox or bullock that has horns and hooves. David understand, understood that if I would just praise God, if I would just sing him a song, if I would just magnify his name, if I would just bless the Lord, he loves that more than any other sacrifice which he requires. See, David was a prophet. David was a king. David was a priest. And David was a seer. And he saw into the future. And he understood that 23rd Psalm is written like a prayer we would pray, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely, goodness, hey, goodness, hey, mercy, shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Go on, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. <laughs> David understood if I will praise the Lord and sing him a song, that's what God loves. Hallelujah. This man touched God's heart simply because God opened his understanding to the power of praise. He danced before the Lord with all his might. He clapped his hands. He would open his mouth. He would sing praises unto God. He played his music, and he played his harp with such an anointing that evil spirits would flee and run. Could it be that you have an anointing that God just loves your praises so much that that battle that you're fighting right now, you prayed and you prayed and you prayed it, but if you just drop some praise into that situation, all of a sudden those evil spirits that have been hounding your trail, they flee in the name of Jesus. 
I, I look at in Acts 10, 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil. That word oppressed, that's a long Greek word. I, can't, I won't even try to pronounce it. But it means dominion, and it means to lord yourself over someone. Jesus came onto this planet, and he saw that the devil had taken dominion over his beautiful creation that had fallen into sin. And that the devil was trying to exert lordship over the people. So Jesus ultimately, he goes and he sets the captive free. He says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. And, and he goes and he ministers. He goes to the cross. He sheds his precious blood. He's resurrected. He ascends to the highest point in the universe, sets down as our great high priest in heaven itself, gave us the authority to use his name, gave us power, kratos, dominion, gave us Power, exosia, which is authority, gave us power, dunamis, which is the word power, over all the power of the devil. You have the keys of the kingdom, but you got to use them, hallelujah. And when you start praying and you start praising, God says, okay, angel, get ready. That bowl is full. Now tilt it and cast fire into that situation. Go on, praise God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> David touched God's heart. Because he knew that the sacrifice of praise moved God more than the sacrifice of an ox or bullock. And it hasn't changed. When we begin to praise God, when we begin to worship God, it means more to him than any other sacrifice which we could make. See, we want to do it in the flesh. We think, well, I got plenty of money, I'll just give. Or I've got this talent, so I'll just use it. No, God wants you praise. Actually, God wants your heart. Hallelujah. When, when the Bible says, Abraham believed God, and it was accounted unto him for righteousness. He made an unqualified commitment to God that everything he had belonged to God. He got a, into the blood covenant. And what he was saying is, God, everything I have belongs to you too. And when he asked him for that son up there on Mount Moriah, God said, oh, no, it's not your son. You take your son on home. He said, it's my son. It's his blood that's going to be shed for the sins of the whole world. See, God, he's a good God. And if you can ever realize that God is not against you, God is for you, and God loves you, and if you will pray, and, and, and if you haven't arrived yet at the point where, where you're seeking to arrive, if you still got habits and Thanks. Guess what? Where sin is abound, grace does much more abound. And God's grace is more powerful than anything the devil ever threw your way. And if you will offer him praise with your prayers, hallelujah, you are subject for your breakthrough. I want you to listen to David. Look at Psalms 134 and 1. Behold, bless ye the Lord, all ye servants of the Lord, which stand by night in the house of the Lord. Now, you saints that don't come back on Sunday night, that don't work for you. You got to stand by night. Woo! <laughs> I just thought I'd get that in there. Hallelujah. God loves his church, and his church ought to love Jesus, and you ought to come every time these doors open because you are important to God, and you're important to your brothers and sisters, and you've got gifts, and, and God is just waiting to use you. Hallelujah. If you're in Victor Lane, praise God, come pray for somebody that's not living there. Uh, when you first got saved, let me ask you, what did you do? You answer that yourself, hallelujah. If you're like me, you went to church every time the door was open. I went to the Catholic church one time. I did. If it had church on the door, I, I'm brand new. And I was all by myself. I'd go to church every night. I went to church one night, and the doors weren't even open there. I said, what kind of Christians are they? It was on a Wednesday night. And I went to my uncle's house, and he was a preacher. And I didn't, I'd just gotten saved, you know, and I didn't have enough sense to know you know, how to receive things. But I got sanctified that night. And if I had enough sense, I got filled with the Holy Ghost. But guess what? I went back to church the following Sunday, and God filled me with the Holy Ghost and with fire. God is a good God. He won't withhold anything from you. Look at Psalms 134, verse 1. Behold, bless you the Lord, all your servants of the Lord, which stand by night in the house of the Lord. Now, look at this. Lift up your hands in the sanctuary and bless the Lord, the Lord that made the heaven and the earth. Bless thee out of Zion. What did David say? Give another bullock? No. Give another lamb? No. He said, lift up your hands in the sanctuary. In other words, we need to stand right now and give Jesus Christ a praise break. Come on. Let's give him a praise break 
for what he has done. Lift up your hands in the sanctuary and bless the Lord. Bless ye the Lord. Hallelujah, which made the heaven and the earth. Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the psalter and harp. Praise him with the timbrel and dance. Praise him with string instruments and organs. Praise him with the loud cymbals. Praise him upon the high sounding cymbals. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. Asha, come on, Shah. Ramakosha. If you don't have enough vocabulary to express it, start praising him in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Woo! Praise the Lord. Praise him for his wonderful works to the children of men. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. David knew how to touch the heart of God. And praise was his secret weapon. Praise glorifies God. And you must understand this principle if you want God to fight your battles. If you want God to tilt the prayer bowls and release your blessing from heaven, you must learn how to activate the spirit world. See, there were people, prophets in that Old Testament, they understood a lot more in their dispensation of the law. They understood a lot about grace. Look at Hosea 14 and 2. Uh, Hosea understood something. Look here. Take with you words. Woo! Take this word. <laughs> take a few words and turn to the Lord, saying unto him, Take away all iniquity. Receive us graciously. So we will render the calves of our lips. Hosea is talking about our praise. He said, if you will take away our iniquity, if you just, <laughs> see, in our dispensation, we call it salvation. If you just save us, deliver us from iniquity, receive us, then God, we will praise you with the calves of our lips. Think about it. God wants your praise. And Hosea, under that old dispensation, he said, I want you to offer the calves of your lips. Now, look at Hebrews 13, 15. It says, by him, by Jesus, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. Like Sister Patsy just preached, hallelujah. <laughs> Praise him in the good time. Praise him in the bad time. Praise him in the mountaintops. Praise him in the valleys. Praise him when the bills are due. Praise him when you've got abundance and you're not worried about any of that stuff. Just offer the sacrifice of praise, the calves of your lips. And, and, and the writer of Hebrews, he said, I, you need to do it continually. You need to continually have a sacrifice of praise unto God. Hallelujah. See, it's the calves of our lips, the words of our praise as we give thanks to God. I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I raise a hallelujah louder than the unbelief. I raise a hallelujah. My weapon is a melody. I raise a hallelujah. Heaven comes to fight for me. I'm going to sing in the middle of the storm. Louder and louder. You're going to hear my praises roar. Listen, devil. I'm not listening to you. I'm going to make you listen to my praise. I'm going to sing in the middle of the storm. Louder and louder. You're going to hear my praises roar. Sing it again. I'm going to sing in the middle of the storm. Louder and louder. You're going to hear my praises roar. Woo! Glory. Just do it. It feels good. Woo! Glory! Woo! Asha! Come on, Asha! Come on, higher! Glory! Woo! 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 Glory! Glory! I raise a hallelujah louder than the unbelief. Heaven's gonna come to fight for me. Heaven.
heaven's going to come to fight for you. God said that proud bowl is full, and the great high priest is sprinkling that incense. And I want you to tilt it into that situation. And what you've been praying about. Woo! When you mix. Glory to God. Sister, I release you from that arthritis that's trying to take your body. Be free! In the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Before you ever get your breakthrough, send some hallelujahs. Send up some glories. Send up some thank you, thank you, Jesus, from my heart. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Is your prayer bowl full? God will accept your worship. Maybe you fail. Maybe you just have a problem that you're still dealing with. That's all right. It's not your responsibility. God said, I'm going to write my laws in your heart. I'm going to put them in your mind. I'm going to be to you a God. You're going to be to me a people. You just keep coming back to my altar of grace. You just keep coming back to me. And your breakthrough is on the way. But God says, I want you to learn the power of prayer. And I want you to couple with it the power of praise. Come on, church. Go on, praise him. <laughs> Hallelujah. Go on. Glory. Glory. The devil would like to tell you that you're not going to get your breakthrough, but you will. I'm going to fast forward this thing. I got Paul and Silas. They're in prison. <laughs> it's midnight. Their backs were bleeding, and they were in shackles and chains, and they were bound tight. But I want to tell you something. Their spirit was not bound. Woo! I mean, they were in the innermost part of the prison, but they got happy. Paul's in prison, but he got happy. I said, Paul's in prison, but he got happy. And in the midnight hour, they began to sing praises unto God. And God invaded that place. Woo! I mean, God tilted the prayer bowl. <laughs> God says, all right, cast some Holy Ghost fire into that place. Cast my presence into that place. And, and when he did, the chains fell off of everybody. The doors were open. The jailer got saved. And the whole jailhouse got saved. Had jailhouse rock. And all the families got saved. Why? Because somebody had been praying. Somebody had been preaching. Somebody had been praising God. And their breakthrough came in the midnight hour. Hallelujah. Woo! Don't let the devil take your song. And don't let the devil take your praise. Because if the devil can't take your praise, if he can't take your song, he can't keep your goods. He takes stuff from people and he carries them off to his warehouse. And he puts them down in his warehouse and it's got your name on it. And if you don't go after it, guess what? He keeps your goods. But if you will rise up in the power, the authority of the name of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, hallelujah, and what God has given you, you can go and say, hey, devil, get your hands off my stuff. You're not keeping my health. You're not keeping me bound. You're not keeping my family. You're not holding my finances. I've been born again. I have power. I have authority. I have God's glory. I am who God said I am. I have what God said I have. I can do what God said I can do. And I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Hallelujah to the Lamb. God inhabits our praises. So when you open your mouth and offer the sacrifice of praise, God shows up. No wonder the devil minimizes praise so much. See, I'm a praise. I'm not ashamed to praise him. I, I, I go right down to the courthouse if they ask me, and I'll just, they don't have to ask me to. I just go down there and praise God. They, they asked me to come pray the prayer at my high school reunion. And somebody wrote me and said, you know there are people of different faiths in there, don't you? Yeah, I remember my brother. He was a Jewish fellow, nice guy that I went to high school with. They were good people. I mean, they gave us the whole Bible. They gave us our Savior, right? But they told me, said, we want you to pray and bless everybody and bless the food after that. Well, they asked me to pray. 
you good Baptist brother out there and Methodist and others, if you, if you ask me to come preach in your church, guess what? You're going to get both barrels. You're going to get Holy Ghost, and you're going to get fire, and you're going to get Jesus. Hallelujah. I mean, just be who you are. Don't be what you ain't. Just be what you is. Because if you is not what you am, then you am not what you is. If you're a little tadpole, don't try to wet, wag the dog. Don't try, don't try to be a frog. If you're a little tail, don't try to wag the dog. You can always pass the plate if you can't exhort and preach. If you're a little pebble, don't try to be the beach. Don't be what you ain't. Just be what you is. Because if you is not what you am, then you am not what you is. And I am what I am by the glory and the mercy and the goodness of God. Come on, let's take a praise break. Come on, come on, come on. I preached long enough. I think you got the word. I think you got the message into your heart. Send up some praise. Send up some glory. Send up some hallelujahs. Your answer is on the way. Your deliverance is on the way. Your breakthrough is on the way. Your healing is on the way. How can you say that, Pastor? Because I just preached you the word of God. And God watches over his word to perform it. Hallelujah. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him in the morning. Praise him in the noon time. Praise Brother Milton. Him. Praise him. Praise him when the sun goes down. Serve him. Serve him. Serve him in the morning. Serve him at the noon time. Serve him. Come on. Serve him. Serve him when the sun praise him. Go. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him in the morning. Praise him in the new time. Praise him. Praise him. Praise, praise, praise. Praise him when the sun Go. goes down. One more time. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him in the morning. I'm so glad, glory. And I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. King in glory, hallelujah. Jesus lifted me. Come on, let's come to this altar and praise him. There's a fire I'm burning so on this altar. Fire shall ever be burning upon the altar. So it shall never go out. Everybody, bring your praise onto the altar. Come on, let's get together. Like they did on the day of Pentecost. They were all with one accord in one place. Come on, let's praise the Lord. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me.
Glory. Tell the devil, say, you're not oppressing me. I change laws. I'm not under your lordship of sickness and disease. I'm under Jesus Christ's lordship. Hallelujah. Woo! Glory. Glory. It's just us. Yes. Come on and pray. Glory. Said, look what the Lord has done. Look, look what, what the look Lord Look what he's done. Look at you. Look at yourself. Heal my body. Heal my body. That's my mind. Save me. me. It was just, just in time. Woo! <laughs> Close. Come on up here, sister. Come on. He's oh, praise him. I'll tell you what. Time to praise him. Come she started on, all this stuff. We are tonight when the Holy Ghost broke out on the glory. Woo! Glory. Come on. Come on up here. Brother Woodrow, you ought to be up here. Come on, brother. You ought to praise up. Glory. Woo! Hallelujah. Tilt the prayer bowl. Tilt that prayer bowl. Tilt it. Blair, she just finished her last chemo, and we believe in Almighty God. So heal her as I use you as the point of contact. In the name of Jesus, we curse that disease, that oppressive power. We release God's grace, God's healing. Sing it, brother. Hallelujah. Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship and wonderful. Woo! Every praise. Thank you, Lord, I'm blessed. 
praise. Thank you, Lord, I'm delivered. Thank you, Lord, for supplying all my needs. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I come under your Lordship. So everything you have belongs to me. And everything I have belongs to you. Hallelujah. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. 